Hello and welcome to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday out there and uh, let's move forward. My weather updates here, um, I'm kind of giving you an overview of how this channel works here. A new update will be coming every day between 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. Um, I will be breaking down a complete weather forecast here across the country, giving you all the detailed look here at the all the detailed look here at upcoming weather systems across the country, whether it's severe weather, winter storms, ice storms, derechos, anything here in between. I will be covering that in a detailed fashion. And also leave your comments below as to which city you would like me to give a two-day forecast for here on my new updates every day here starting tomorrow. I'll pick two random cities every day to forecast here. Uh, so leave your comments below and I'll be picking those here to give you a two-day forecast here on my new updates here um, as we move forward. Also remember to leave any comments below just in general here, any comments or questions about here my uh, weather content or weather related content. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel here for the latest and um, most updated here up to date weather forecast here as we move here through the spring months and summer months here as well. So the high temperatures here as we head into this afternoon, colder up into the uh, northern plains around the Great Lakes region, temperatures here in the low to mid 20s. Also here into the central plains, seeing some warmer temperatures here in the middle 50s to low 60s. A lot of warm air into the desert southwest, into the deep south here and across the south and east. Temperatures here into Texas here around 90, around Austin, getting down here towards San, uh, San Antonio. Houston areas here into the middle 80s. Um, desert Southwest around Phoenix here into the middle 90s. Could be even a couple areas approaching 100 here into portions of southwestern portions of uh, Arizona. And then here into the northeast seeing some cooler temperatures kind of averaging around the low to mid 40s. Some 50s here mixed in as well. As we head into tonight, a lot of cold air being bottled up here into the northern portions here of the country. Some single digit lows even across north central portions of Minnesota and portions here getting into the Midwest, lows into the teens and lower to middle 20s. Also into the Northeast here, lows into the upper 20s to low 30s. Some warmer air here across Texas and down into Louisiana, getting into the Southwest where lows will be averaging around the middle and upper 50s. Some 60 degree lows here, even around uh, areas like the Dallas-Fort Worth area, on southward toward Austin, down towards Houston, and even some lower 60s here across the Phoenix area and lower 60s across the uh, Southern Florida Panhandle as well for lows. As we head into to tomorrow. Here's the high temperature forecast for tomorrow here. Middle 30s across northern Illinois into northeastern Iowa getting down into central portions here of Indiana. Some colder air here still being felt across northern Wisconsin, north central Minnesota, northeastern North Dakota and getting down here into the Great Lakes states here around Michigan, getting into portions here of the Northeast. Highs will be into the 20s across those areas into the low of 30s. A lot of warm air still being felt here in Texas. Actually a warmer day across most of the state of Texas. Lower 90s could be felt here around you know Wichita Falls, getting down towards uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, down even towards, you know, uh, Lubbock, Texas, toward Midland, Texas, and then some middle and low 90s across here, the desert southwest once again. Southern Florida here, good vacation spot here as we head into this the coming week with lower to middle 80s here possible in a few spots and just middle and upper 70s across the northern side of the panhandle here as well. As we move forward here, you can see the National Weather Services here. These are the current alerts here across the area. Some red flag warnings across central portions of Texas, a couple here into eastern Colorado, several red flag warnings across North and South Carolina, and also most of Georgia, a couple of them even into Central and Southern Florida. Just due to the, your drier soil moisture and content here in the soil is kind of drier. And uh, do be on guard if you here are having any campfires, um, any type of, uh, you know, grilling outside. Do be mindful of that here with the wind as we can have some dry soil moisture that can start fires very easily. So do be on alert for that. Um, and just generally here, pretty quiet across most of the country with alerts other than these red flag warnings with the drier soil moisture. So do be on to uh, on guard for that. 
This is the uh, updated uh, U.S. drought monitor from the U.S. Uh, National Drought Mitigation Center here. And this is the past Thursday's uh, update. And you can see a lot of the western half of the country in drought and across portions here of the upper Midwest here still in moderate, some pockets of severe drought. Also, the drought has been expanding across much of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, getting into Louisiana. Um, the drought has been somewhat uh, persistent across these areas, but they have been getting a little bit better across Mississippi, Alabama, and portions into uh, southern Arkansas and Louisiana here with the latest storms that have been pushing through there as the last week or so. So that is some good news there. Although the drought will continue to worsen across most of the southwest with limited rainfall chances here in the uh, days and weeks to come. This is the updated uh, overnight update from the Storm Prediction Center here. The day four outlook shows a 15% or slight risk for severe weather across southern and southeastern portions here of Kansas. Most of the state of Oklahoma into north central Texas. This includes areas from Wichita to Topeka, getting down towards Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Moore, Oklahoma, El Reno, Oklahoma, Lawton, Oklahoma, those areas, getting down toward the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, even down towards the Austin, Texas. Texas area, getting back maybe just to the west, just to the east rather of Lubbock and Midland, Texas. Those areas here are under the gun yet again for some severe weather with all modes on the table for damaging winds, large hail, and also a few tornadoes here as well. Day five outlook here he even has a higher probability of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center here. A slight risk extends from southern Illinois, western Kentucky, into the foothills here of Missouri, into middle and western Tennessee, eastern portions here of Arkansas, getting down into most of Louisiana, Mississippi, and western portions here of Alabama. An enhanced risk, or 30% risk, of severe thunderstorms across western and central portions of Mississippi, getting down into eastern portions here of Louisiana and southeastern Arkansas, where all modes, again, will be on the table here as well, with damaging straight line winds here, also large hail and a few tornadoes. Potentially even a strong tornado cannot be rolled out here on Wednesday when all the dynamics do kind of start coming together. And then the day six here outlook from the Storm Prediction Center shows a small 15% or slight risk here from Virginia down through central North Carolina, maybe even far northern and northeastern portions here of South, uh, South Carolina where it all modes will be in play again. I think a smaller risk here as some of the dynamics will start to uh, wane as we head toward late next week, but still a threat nonetheless that could have, you know, some isolated damaging winds, large hail, and maybe an isolated tornado or two here across these areas as we head into late next week. Also here, as the storm be here will be pushing in with the trough off the southwest here, you can see the uh, Weather Prediction Center has a marginal risk of flash flooding across southwestern here portions of California, including Los Angeles here. And this is going to be good news for them as they need the rainfall desperately across these areas. So um, just, I mean, even with the heavier rainfall, with all that dry soil and some heavier rainfall potential there, it could lead to a couple areas of floodings around the Los Angeles area, and especially with all the pavement here downtown, could lead to some flooding with a lot of concrete in those areas here as well. Looking ahead here, this is the next storm system expected as we head into Tuesday afternoon on the lee side of the Rockies. A 988 millibar low is expected to develop around eastern and southeastern Colorado with some upper elevation snowfall across the Rockies getting down here into the desert southwest. Also, also some snowfall here up into portions here of Montana, getting up into Wyoming. So, so that is some good news as well. And then the storm system will be pushing into Kansas with a 984 millibar low expected across northern Kansas as we head into Tuesday night. And with some lingering here snowfall across the Rockies, some rainfall here across the northern plains, maybe getting some snow and some sleet and freezing rain here as we head in spotty nature as we head into Minnesota, down through Wisconsin with kind of an arcing band of rain and snow showers here across the Great Lakes regions with kind of a warm front extending from southeastern Nebraska through Iowa, northern Illinois, and getting over toward Ohio, and a kind of a trailing dry line or cold front, if you will, here across the central plains. That will fuel the severe weather potential here as we head into the middle of next week. And then these are the severe storms here that will start to develop as we head into a Tuesday night around eastern Kansas, getting down into Oklahoma, north Texas, do be on guard. Some supercells, multi-cells, line segments, bowing structures, a mixed mode of severe weather is expected across these areas. 
I do expect more supercells here on Tuesday rather than on Wednesday, but this here setup is still uncertain uh, due to the fact that the low pressure here uh, system is still well, it hasn't even developed and the storm system itself has is well off the coast here and has not here moved to inland yet. And also here the track of the low pressure will be key. But this goes along with the Storm Prediction Center's 15% or slight risk zone from here, the Kansas area down through Oklahoma and North Texas. Watch for some storms there. And as we move forward, this will be developing here kind of a squall line or a broken line of some supercells. Also some Boeing structures within here from portions of southern and southwestern Missouri down through northwest Arkansas, portions of north central Texas, getting down toward the Austin area, down toward the Houston area with time, and just pushing east of the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex and east of Oklahoma City. City proper in east of Tulsa, Oklahoma here as well with some thunderstorms. Still a few tornadoes are possible, so do be on guard for that. And this will only continue to push eastward here as we head through time. Now looking at the dew point temperatures here, um, aiding in the thunderstorm development as we head into Tuesday afternoon and evening, low to mid 60 dew points are expected across east central Texas, low 60 dew points and some upper 50 degree, uh, degree dew points across portions of eastern Oklahoma, much of the state here of Arkansas and Louisiana, southern portions of Missouri, so that will provide a lot of fuel for these storms. And then as we head into one, Tuesday night, you can see here the dry line is going to really start to set up across central Central Texas, Central and Western Oklahoma into central portions here of Kansas, and that will be the providing uh, the providing line for the lift here for these thunderstorms to start to grow in intensity and grow here upscale into that line as I was showing you here in the previous run as we head into Tuesday night across these areas. And this will only continue to infect warm, moist air off the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico will be open for business, so dew points will continue to rise mid to upper 60 dew points, especially across southeastern Texas, southern Louisiana, which is generally upper 50 to mid 60 dew points here across much of the deep south, the Dixie Alley region, the southeast, as we head here into uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Looking at the surface base cape or instability parameters here, not not too terribly impressive, but just enough to get these thunderstorms to go as we'll have a lot of wind shear in place. I'll show you that here in just a moment. But you can see some instability growing here across Kansas, portions here of eastern and central Oklahoma getting down into northeastern Texas, much of the state here of Missouri getting down to the portions here of Arkansas, around the 500 to 1,500 type here of uh, joules per kilogram with the instability parameter. So not off the charts instability, but enough to get these storms to develop and produce some intense weather here as we head into Tuesday night. And the instability will continue to grow as we head overnight here as a low level jet starts to poke into these storms from the south and west. So see here and along that dry line with the lift. So the instability will be maximized as we head into Tuesday night across the central and southern plains. So do be on guard for that. And then looking ahead, this is the bulk shear output here as uh, on the GFS here. This is kind of going to aid in the wind shear for these thunderstorms to rotate. Also to kind of aid in the thunderstorm uh, progression and propagation here as they push to the east with time. This is Tuesday afternoon and seeing some shear here across the central and southern portions here of the plains. Um, most of the shear is kind of rounding this trough as we head into Tuesday afternoon. So still waiting on a lot of that shear to get in place here with the storms to develop. Once we get into Tuesday night, the shear will start to catch up with this here dry line and we'll start to see some thunderstorms fire. And this wind shear will actually provide kind of the uh, forward propagation of this line as we push to the, from west to east across the central and southern plains into the Dixie Alley overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. And this will also aid in uh, uh, updraft organization as well where these storms will continue to go here for a long time. So severe weather, once it gets going, it will stay going for a while. And this wind shear will only just increase in intensity with a strong low-level jet and strong mid-level jet. Pretty intense here for this time of year, actually, but as we head here into Tuesday night. And this will only grow in intensity and move further, farther to the north, rounding this trough here as we head into midday Wednesday into Wednesday afternoon. So um, I think Wednesday is setting up to be a bigger day than Tuesday, but still be on guard for Tuesday as we could still see some dangerous severe weather, including a few tornadoes here as well. Now looking here at Wednesday, this is Wednesday afternoon. This line will continue pushing eastward here across Dixie Alley, the Ohio Valley, down through the Tennessee Valley. Um, a line of some strong thunderstorms, a QLCS line or quasi-linear 
uh, convective system here, if you will, across the southern portions of the country. And this is going to aid in more, I think, of a predominant damaging wind threat along this line with also some large hail, some very heavy rain and some frequent lightning. But also here across the far uh, northern or far eastern fringes of this line here along the leading edge could see some rotation, some spin ups, um, some mezzo vortices. So we'll have to watch that as we head into Wednesday night and uh, into early Thursday as this continues to push east. Pretty impressive squall line really from portions here of southern Lake Michigan getting down through the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, into the Dixie Alley and southeastern regions. Pretty intense. I think the strongest weather will be around portions here of southern Kentucky getting down into Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi getting down toward New Orleans here as well. So this include Birmingham down here just east of Jackson and getting down toward New Orleans, Nashville, Knoxville, those areas getting up here into the severe weather potential here as we head into uh, Wednesday evening. So be on guard for that. And this will continue to push east. A very powerful low pressure system It's 973 millibars is expected here around northeastern Wisconsin or uh, here areas around there as we head into Wednesday night. So a very powerful area of low pressure. So a lot of wind will go along with this with non-thunderstorm winds here as well being very gusty across most of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and much of the deep south and central plains on the back end of this storm here as well. And this will continue, like I said, pushing east here across the southeast, falling apart with the better dynamics here, starting to outpace itself as we head to the east. And uh, this will be around midday on Thursday and Thursday afternoon. But still some severe weather, like I said, from Virginia down through the Carolinas here as well. Looking at the dew point temperatures here on Wednesday afternoon, still low to mid, even upper 60 dew points across most of portions here of Mississippi, Alabama, western and middle Tennessee, getting down into southeastern portions here of Louisiana. So a lot of heavy rain with these storms, a lot of juice for these storms to work with. So do want to be here on guard for that as these storms will be pushing from west to east um, and taking advantage of this fuel, if you will, to uh, provide some up updraft organization to go along with that sheer. Uh, the wind shear here to keep these storms going and going strong through the day here on Wednesday and into Thursday. And this will only continue pushing east, kind of waning as this kind of cold front or dry line and kind of here pushes to the east. And uh, when the cold front pushes to the east off the east coast, they'll put an end to the severe weather potential here as we head into late next week. Looking at the surface base instability here as we head into our Wednesday afternoon, a little more impressive than on Tuesday across portions here of Mississippi, western Alabama, especially southeastern and eastern portions here of Louisiana, around 1,000 to perhaps 2,000 joules per kilogram here is expected across these areas. So more instability, more wind shear, which means a higher chance of severe weather across these areas, and that is why the Storm Prediction Center has outlined this area for an enhanced risk as we head into Wednesday for those areas before the here instability starts to wane as we head into Thursday with maybe some small instability here across this area, depending on cloud cover here uh, with a slight risk on Thursday. Wind shear here Wednesday afternoon, like I said, fairly impressive, very impressive rather here as we head into Wednesday afternoon, I mean, the mid-level jet will be cranking. The low-level jet will be cranking here out of the south and west. Surface winds will be out of the south-southeast. So a lot of turning in the atmosphere. And this will continue pushing east, rounding this trough, and some pretty intense wind shear for these storms to continue with their organization with this squall line. Also here with kind of a QLCS or quasi-linear here uh, uh, convective system, if you will, as this pushes to the east with some embedded tornado potential here across the deep south. And this will continue here as we head into Thursday here as well. Um, looking ahead here at the uh, storms and how they will kind of work again, this is going to be from west to east. You see a kind of a squall line pushing from west to east, and this will continue into Thursday with, like I said, the potential for severe weather. Another look at that. Now here, you can see temperatures across the deep south here as we head into early Wednesday. Pretty warm temperatures, but now let's focus on the colder side of the storm because there will be a cold side as well. Some heavier snowfall, also some mixed precipitation of sleet, freezing rain, maybe even some grapple across some of these areas here from central, uh, central and northern Minnesota back into the Dakotas, Wisconsin, and down through the Great Lakes here into the 
UP of Michigan, to the state of Michigan out here, if you will, and then also here into the northeast. A lot of cold air on the backside. And this will only continue with some cold air filtering in from the northwest, kind of getting into that northwest flow here on the backside of the storm system. And that will only continue here as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and then some colder air filtering in from Canada across the international border there as we head into our Thursday. So the snowfall output here from the GFS showing a rather robust system here for snowfall, especially this time of year here across this area, especially across grassy surfaces. But I think with the magnitude of the storm system, cannot rule out a few inches of snow accumulating here even on the pavement here. It will take a little while for the here pavement temperatures to warm up, or just sorry, rather to cool down for this uh for the snowfall to accumulate here, but uh, once it does, it will continue here until the storm system moves off to the east. Looking at a general, I think, eastern portion of the Dakotas, a general one to two inches of snow, maybe embedded three inches, and then I think the bigger uh, player here will be Minnesota, northern and central Wisconsin getting, I think, a general three to six inches worth of snow. Potentially locally heavier amounts are possible as we head into uh, the late next week. And then the total uh, freezing rain uh, forecast here across central portions here of Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, getting back into Michigan, into portions here of Pennsylvania, northeastern Ohio. This might be a little bit of contamination here with all the moisture in the atmosphere. But I do think a zone from central portions of Minnesota, north central Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, down through the Detroit area, getting over toward Pennsylvania, northern and northeastern portions here of Ohio, could have up to around maybe up to a localized quarter inch of ice. So definitely watch this here as we head into the next several days. We could have winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, maybe even ice storm warnings come out for the storm. So do want to be on uh, lookout for that as we could have some ice this time of year. Still uncertain how much will accumulate because of all the warmer ground but here something to definitely watch here in the coming days now in general this is the 120 hour precipitation map here this goes all the way through here the early morning hours of the last day of March and you can see some well need here some well needed precipitation across some parts of the area from Texas into Louisiana also some more needed precipitation here across the upper Midwest where there's areas in some drought and here a lot more rainfall where they really don't need it across here, the uh, Tennessee Valley down into the deep south, but they're going to get more with those thunderstorms as we head into late next week as well. Now looking ahead, I know everybody's wondering what will happen as we head here into much of April and looking forward after the storm system moves away. The 6 to 10 day temperature outlook here from the Climate Prediction Center shows a well below normal temperatures across the middle of the country here. And then here uh, uh, slightly above normal here across the west and also the east coast above normal to much above normal here with that storm system moving out. This goes through April 4th, Monday, April 4th. So do keep that in mind. A lot of cooler air across the middle section here of the country centered on the upper Midwest, the central plains here, and also the southern plains as well. The precipitation outlook goes as follows here. You can see much above average precipitation across most of the east coast regions from the northeast down into the mid-Atlantic here into the southeast where with that storm system with a lot of rainfall here across this zone. Kind of some drier air getting back into some northwest flow aloft here into the northern plains, into the Great Lakes and upper Midwest regions, also into south Texas and much below normal precipitation across the west with a slight zone of above normal or near normal precipitation here as we head here around the Rockies and parts of the southwest where they need some rainfall here as well going through April 4th. Then looking ahead even farther, this goes through April 8th, the first week or so of April, still below normal temperatures expected across most here of the eastern two-thirds of the country from the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley into the deep south, uh, slightly above normal here around southern and central Florida Panhandle, and above normal temperatures expected here around most of the west coast here, maybe into the uh, no parts of the northern plains here getting into the southwest as well here with another ridge starting to develop here across the west with a trough here in the east as we head into the first week or so of April. Also with the precipitation outlook showing slightly above normal here across the southeast and the east coast, and then most of the rest of the country around normal or slightly below normal with precipitation with respects here between uh, the, around the first week or so of April here as we head into that time frame uh, coming up as well. And then looking even farther out here, this just came out yesterday from the Climate Prediction Center, the week three and four temperature outlook. This is here, the experimental three, four, uh, week three and four temperature outlook. You can see 
uh, above normal to even much above normal here, especially across the Gulf Coast states in the southeast, also getting up here in the eastern seaboard into the northeast. A, a, below normal zone here across the Pacific Northwest and kind of equal chances of above or be, uh, below normal here across the Northern Plains and portions of the Great Lakes and upper Midwest as we head. This will go all the way through April 22nd. So this will take us through much of April and expecting a warmer April across most of the country here as we head into that time frame. With regards to precipitation here through much of April, Kind of equal chances of above or below normal here, I think. Uh, not too terribly wet, but a lot of storm systems probably still moving through the middle of the country. Some enhanced precipitation across the Great Lakes region into the northeast. Below normal, temp uh, below normal precipitation across the southwest getting into the southern plains and also into the uh, Florida Panhandle below normal precipitation expected here as well. And then here you can see this is the April outlook here, I think, from the climate forecasting systems model. You can see much of the country will really generally be here warmer than normal across April, and that could spell more severe weather, more storm systems moving into the area, a lot more amplified pattern here. So uh, I think April will be a busy month for severe weather and tornado here uh, activity. So do here uh, make sure you know your safe place. Also, uh, be on the lookout for any washes warnings as we go through the month of April as these will be serious potentially here with some outbreaks and also here some dangerous flooding potential here as well with repeated rounds of rainfall so do be on guard for that but generally a warmer than normal April is expected here as we head through time. So thank you for watching my video and be sure to like my video here and leave any of your comments below here regarding anything weather related and do remember to subscribe to my channel as I will have all the weather related topics here coming up later this week regarding this next storm system and also looking ahead. So thank you.